Catastrophic pandemics could cause billions of deaths. At the current rate of growth, the field of medical countermeasures will be unable to tackle catastrophic pandemics with the speed and scale necessary. The COVID-19 vaccines were the fastest vaccines developed in history, yet still took one year too slow to stop a wildfire pathogen infecting and killing most of the population. Even if a vaccine is developed, we lack the sufficient manufacturing capacity needed to create enough doses to cover most of the world. A large part of this is because most manufacturing facilities are highly specialized and can't be quickly repurposed to produce medical countermeasures. The research and development of new and better medical countermeasures need to start now, but the field is held back by the lack of profit incentives. Pandemics are low probability, high stake events. The costs of development are astronomical. So why would companies spend resources developing something that might never be used? The best way out of this dilemma is through the development of platform biotechnologies. Platforms can be a delivery vector or manufacturing process that can be rapidly repurposed for various diseases and treatments. For example, the mRNA vaccine is a platform that can be used for a wide range of pathogens, from COVID-19 to Ebola. Platform-based vaccines are crucial during a pandemic because they can be developed much faster with a much higher probability of success than traditional vaccines. Platform technologies also allow, the, allow for flexible manufacturing facilities. For example, a factory for manufacturing cancer mRNA therapeutics can be repurposed during a pandemic to produce mRNA vaccines instead, because the core processes are the same. However, the platform field is currently held back by stringent regulations. The long approval process and the huge amount of evidence needed drastically increases the cost of the development. This is a huge burden for the small and medium-sized biotech companies that dominate the medical countermeasure field, slowing down growth. The reluctance to relax regulations come from concerns about compromising safety and efficacy. However, platform technologies offer a unique opportunity. Two drugs based on the same platform share many common characteristics. This means that a lot of evidence is redundant and does not need to be resubmitted for each new application whilst maintaining the rigor of regulatory assessment. Considering this, my policy proposal for the US FDA recommends the use of a platform technology master file. First, a database will be constructed for existing platforms containing data from approved documentations. Companies can cross-reference these data in their new drug applications instead of redoing the same experiment, saving valuable time and money. Secondly, companies that develop new platform technologies will be eligible for tax credits for up to 50% of the clinical drug testing cost. They will also receive extensive guidance from the FDA, who will help them collect key data and construct a new platform master file for the data place. Finally, Tax credits could incentivize the building of flexible manufacturing capacities. The streamlined regulatory process and tax credits will reduce cost and incentivize innovation. This is expected to cause rapid growth in the field of platform technologies, which will in turn draw in investment, creating a positive feedback loop. Looking at precedents such as the Orphan Drug Act, we expect to see an increased number of new platforms being developed. This will increase our capacity to quickly create new vaccines and treatments during a catastrophic pandemic. The platform database will help regulators draw on past evidence and make rapid decisions during a pandemic without compromising safety and efficacy. During the pandemic, a large reservoir of flexible manufacturing capacities can be quickly repurposed to churn out vaccines. This approach drastically reduces deaths and the probability of existential risk. In the next year, I'll reach out to experts and stakeholders across many fields, including biotech, biosecurity experts, the WHO and regulatory bodies. I will ask them for feedback on the potential regulations and to check my assumptions. Next, I aim to intern at the WHO and help construct a regulatory guideline for platform technologies. 
The WHO can then organize meetings with member countries to discuss the implementation of these regulations, and further pressure can be exerted by advocacy and public support. I hope that you are as excited by these changes as I am. Thank you.